So we are in week two of developing the leader within you. And we're going to be here every Thursday at noon on WednesdayZoom.com. So please make sure you tell your team um, and the people that you love and lead so they can uh, grow the leader within them as well. Well, we're getting all of our material from John Maxwell's Developing the Leader Within You. And if you've never read his book before, you've got to read this book. And if you've already read this book before, which I have literally over 10 times, the 2.0 version has so many more deeper insights because John Maxwell wrote this book when he was 40. And now I believe he's in his 60s. Actually, I don't want to age him. So don't quote me on his age. But he, he basically says, you know, 20 years ago when I wrote this book. And so there's so much more insights on the 2.0 version. Last week, we talked about influence and how to increase your influence with each individual person that you lead. But this week in chapter two, John Maxwell talks about the law of priorities. Priorities. People used to talk a lot about time management. But the reality is you can't manage time. Managing something means controlling it. It means changing it. And Jamie Cornell wrote, time cannot and will not be managed. And you will never get more of it. The problem is rooted in the choices that you're making. So what kind of choices are we making with time? I actually want to share that um, as organized as I seem to be, and as organized as I was in my 20s when I was first getting started in the business and kicking butt and going out there and, you know, hitting awards and making new milestones and hitting new levels. When I became a mom, I, I, I feel like my entire world turned upside down as far as having it all together, um, being organized, the time management the constant change in the schedule where the kids start school. And so we're on one school routine, but then all of a sudden we have winter break and now we're on that routine. And then they go back to school in the spring and then we're on that routine and take some time getting used to it. And then we have summer break. And by the time we're getting used to the summer break, all of a sudden summer ends and now we're in a new routine. I know it messes me up. I know it messes Dave up. And so we've had to learn how to be very intentional with our time. And in the book, Developing the Leader Within You, John Maxwell says, we need to examine ourselves, our choices, our calendar, but more importantly, our priorities, the title of chapter two. These are things we can control, not time, which we cannot control. There will always be 24 hours a day, at 24 hours in a day and 60 seconds in a minute that ticks and passes regardless. We cannot control it. We can't stop time. It's going to keep running. So we need to determine how we will spend the 24 hours we have every day. And that requires us to prioritize our time so we get more production out of those hours. Now, most people overestimate the importance of most things. And petty and mundane tasks threaten to steal much of our time. If we're not careful, we start living for the wrong things. Let me tell you how much I have to play offense and defense throughout the day. Like just yesterday, for example, um, my goal is to sit down and make a whole bunch of calls, make a whole bunch of calls to all these people here that are in my notebook of people that I've met and networked with and leads that have come in. 100% positive intention to do it. You know, but then you sit down and then the phone rings. Well, do you answer it? Which kind of call is it? Is it, is it a call that's going to take a long time? Is it a prospect? Is it a team member? Um, you know, is it someone trying to sell me something? And then the notification goes off. Notification goes off or a reminder goes off to do something. I'm like, oh, I need to do that. Okay. So then you do the reminder. <laughs> And then while you're in there, maybe it was a reminder to send somebody a text message. Well, then you're in their text message inbox and you happen to peek and see that this person that you've been waiting for them to respond actually sent you a message. So now you're reading that message and now you're going through that rabbit hole. And all of a sudden you find yourself on Facebook and 30 out, three minutes later, you're like, what in the world just happened? 
I have to play 100% intentional defense. Defense. Like I feel like I'm hitting the ping pong balls out of out of the way every five seconds. I have to say, nope. I got to turn off my notifications. I have to not check my text message inbox. In fact, during my power hour, power hour, speaking of, thank you, Lois, Thomas, and Susie, and uh, Delano's mom, Delano's mom for running and being here on the power hour. Every day they run a power hour, hour supporting people that want to get together, show up, and make calls together so you could stay focused. But you should have your own power hour regardless of whether you're with workout partners or not. That is the hour where you're going to sit down. You're going to turn the ringer of your phone off. You're going to turn off text message notifications and Facebook pings and notifications. And you're not going to check email as much as you just want to multitask in between calls and look at the computer and check the email while you're waiting for the person to answer the phone. I know it. I know it because I do it too. And I struggle with this every day. So we have to be 100% focused and intentional. And that comes from understanding our most important priorities. So everyone write this down. IPA, it stands for income producing activity. What is that most income producing activity for you? And let's focus on that. John Maxwell in his book tells a really funny story about how having too many priorities paralyzes people. One of the most popular acts in the circus for years was the performance of a lion tamer. A man would walk into the cage full of dangerous lions, but how in the world would he survive? He would go in with a chair. He would go in with a chair and he would face the legs of the chair at the lions and the lions would be focused on the four different legs. And when you're focused on four different things, what happens? You're not focused on any of them. So focus is focusing on one thing. Write this down, F-O-C-U-S. Follow one course until successful. Focus. So many people these days are trying to multitask and do so many different things at once. And interference is real, y'all. So we need to be 100% intentional on protecting ourselves from the multiple things that are just pulling for our attention constantly, especially now with all the technology. So what's the solution? In Developing the Leader Within You, John Maxwell talks about solution number one, and that's working smarter. Working smarter, you've heard of that in this business. We work smarter instead of working harder, which is why we're, we're building a residual income business on a leveraged income business. But in this case, working smarter, what's the one thing that you do that yields the highest results than anything else? What's the one thing that you personally do that you have noticed yields the highest results for you in membership sales and recruiting? What's that one thing? For some people, it might be having a networking sit down. I just had a networking sit down right before here where I met with someone who's a website designer. She's in my networking um, community. And we had a one-to-one -one and learned all about her and, and she learned all about what I do. And that usually ends up in high results for me because not only does she now know what I know, know what I do, but she knows 300 people that I don't know that she'll refer me to. So for me personally, that's one of the highest yield activities that I can do that yields incredible results. So let's just think about what is that thing that we should be spending your time on and doing? John Maxwell says, proactive beats reactive. Proactive beats reactive. Having a productive and focused day is a result of being proactive and planning. Dave and I had to do that. You know, we had to learn what's the new school schedule. So this time around, we could be a whole lot better emotionally than we have been in the past when the school schedule completely changes. And next week, the kids are on half day for school, which is 
you know, different as well. So we have to plan for that in advance. And it might seem so ridiculous to have to plan every minute and plan every day and just seem kind of boring and laborious, but really it's so freeing. It's so freeing when you're planning because all you need to do is wake up and look at the book and follow, follow your own orders that you put for yourself to do versus being reactive where we're putting um, out fires all day and responding to other people's requests of us. Reactive. You know, what's, what's the worst way to start your day and be reactive? The worst way to start the day is by checking your email in the morning. In fact, there's a lady who wrote a book called Don't Check Your Email in the Morning. Why? She wrote that for a good reason, because your email inbox is just a list of things that everyone else wants you to do for them. That's really what it is. So being proactive totally beats reactive. I had a coaching call with an executive director um, on Team Pinnacle who was looking for some guidance, not in my organization, but someone called me that's, um, that's on the greater team. And after we were talking about planning and priorities and we were talking about, you know, okay, what's your goal? What's the habit that's going to get you there? And what day of the week are you going to do those? What time of day are you going to make those calls? And he determined, oh, I need to make calls from, I have a, he has a full-time job during the day, but he can make his own schedule there. So he's going to make calls from one to 3 p.m., take a break and then make calls from four to six. So basically from one to six with a one hour break. And he goes, wait a minute. You mean to tell me all these years, what's been holding me back was my scheduling? That was his aha for the day. I mean, it wasn't a deep and insightful thing. I didn't say some magical words or anything like that. Uh, I didn't create a miracle. It was just, what? This whole time, the only thing that was holding me back was scheduling. Oh my gosh. So John Maxwell says the most important, the important needs to take precedence over the urgent. The important needs to take precedence over the urgent. So if you're in your power hour and your team is calling you, actually, I had a teammate, I was, I was sitting down to make my calls the other day, and then I had a teammate call me. I'm like, oh, I really want to answer this, but uh, I've got I've to stay focused. So, and I don't want to make him feel like I'm ignoring him. So I sent him a message. I said, do you have a three-way call? For me, you know, do you have a prospect on the other line that you want me to talk to? I'm just sitting down to make my power hour right now, and, you know, but I'll be free to talk later. And I had to tell him that because you've got to focus on the important, not just responding to the urgent. People will come to you and say, oh, there's this emergency and there's that emergency, but guess what? Corporate office can answer those questions for that person while you're focused on doing what you need to do. I have someone on the team that always calls me, no matter what, I don't know why. And she's a ringer. <laughs> she's a ringer and she calls me to, to ask me questions that I don't know the answer to. I don't know why she would think that I know the answer, but she always calls me first before. And she goes, I just wanted to call you to check with you before I call corporate. Um, and I want I just wanna say, you need to call corporate and check with them before you call me. <laughs> Anyway, okay, and talking about leadership, what we do want to do is train our team to come with us with solutions. When people come to you with problems and you continue to accept those, what are you doing? You're teaching them to come to you with problems. But if you can, if you can say, or someone says, hey, I really need to talk to you about this and this, or I'm really struggling with this, say, I am excited to talk to you. You send them a message back. I'm really excited to talk to you. Um, when we talk, can you do me a huge favor and come with one or two solutions that you can see would be the answer to your challenge? Teach your team to come to you with solutions. Now, the last thing John Maxwell talks about, no, the second to last thing he talks about is the Pareto Principle. Who's heard of the Pareto Principle? The Italian economist Vilfredo Pareto. Basically, this principle in the business world means that 20% of your priorities will give you 80% of your production. 
20% of your priorities will give you 80% of your production. If you spend your time, energy, money, and personnel on the top 20% of your priorities, it will yield 80% of the results. But here are some other examples John talks about in his book, Developing the Leader Within You. He says, with respect to time, 20% of our time produces 80% of our results. Counseling, 20% of the people take up 80% of our time. Products, 20% of the products bring in 80% of the profits. With respect to books, 20% of the book contains 80% of the content. <laughs> Jobs, 20% of our work gives us 80% of satisfaction. And as far as workforce, 20% of the people do 80% of the work. In leadership, 20% of your team is bringing in 80% of the sales. In speeches, 20% of the presentation creates 80% of the impact. For donations, 20% of the donators or donors give 80% of the money. Taxes, 20% of the people pay 80% of the taxes. In leadership, 20% of the people make 80% of the decisions. And picnics and barbecues, 20% of the people will eat 80% of the food. <laughs> so determine which people in your organization are the top 20% who deserve 80% of your time. Who are the top 20% of the people in your organization that deserve 80% of your time? And for the 80%, the 80% who produce 20% of the results, they seem to want all your time. The funny thing is the the people that are producing the most seem to not, not need me. The people that are like the top producers and the top recruiters and the top, they, they I have to call them. They don't call me because they don't need me. But I do want to, I should be intentional. I need to be more intentional about giving them more of my time because those are the people that need my time. Versus... 80% of the people that only produce 20% of the results, they will want to take up all your time, call you about this, ask you about this, talk about this, talk about that. So obviously beggars can't be choosers. And when you're new, you don't want to be um, putting people off. And we never want to be, we always want people to feel equally um, loved and accepted in your life but you need to protect your own time management, right? So that's nothing you'll ever say to somebody else, but it's just the amount of time that you're realizing that you're spending with people. Same with associations. Do you have toxic people in your life? Is there anybody that you need to spend less time with? I'm not saying cut them out because uh, we're about a loving and supportive community, but is there anyone that you need to, take it you know, from an hour a week down to five minutes a week? And are there people that add so much positivity and value in your life that um, you lift each other up that you need to be spending more time with? Is there someone that you're only spending five minutes a week that you need to be spending an hour a week with or per month? So these are things to think about because our associations really do weigh on us. And... Um, you know, so what, what's most rewarding to you? What is that most highest income producing activity? And we're going to go into breakout rooms shortly where you will get a chance to share what that highest income producing activity is, um, what time of day you're going to be doing that, and your commitment to making sure you're 100% focused and not letting distractions and interference get in your way. But I will end with one more thought. John Maxwell's last piece of advice in chapter two on priorities is make room for margin. Make room for margin. What's margin? According to Richard Swenson, margin is restoring the emotional, physical, financial, and time resources that overload our lives. Margin is the space that exists between our load and our limits. Margin is the gap between rest and exhaustion. 
the space between breathing freely and suffocating. Margin is the opposite of overload. And in my terms, margin is our Sabbath, our Sabbath day, our day off, our day to rest, recharge, and to worship. God said, rest six days on and one day off. Dave Sabula, the number one income earner in Legal Shield, always said he worked six days on and one day off because that's what the good Lord told him to do. Every Friday, I take my Sabbath. Now, that's not, I'm a Christian and that's not, um, Friday's not a religious day. So people are always like, oh, well, what's, what is it special about Friday? For me, I have to take Fridays off because my kids are still in school so I can have a peaceful moment to myself, right? I'm not working for them because when they're home, I'm making grilled cheese sandwiches and, you know, doing all sorts of things and uh, reading storybooks and playing dolls and all that kind of stuff. But I need to rest. So Fridays are my day off where there doesn't seem to be any other conference calls going on. And so, you know what I've been doing? It's been so wonderful. I've been taking my phone and sticking it in my drawer and closing the drawer and walking away on Friday. So if you try to message me or call me, no offense, I, I didn't get it. <laughs> I know, Ray tried to call me last Friday. So, so every Friday, and those of you who are close to me and know me well, no, you can't reach me on Friday. I put it in the drawer. I don't take it with me to the gym. I don't take it with me when I'm going on that walk. I mean, if I feel like I need it for emergency purposes, I'll stick it in the car if I need if I need to take it with me. But if I'm going to go to the store to relax or, or you know, read a book or whatever, I'm not going to have it by my side. Do you know the number one interference today? What is the number one interference today in 2022? That's right, Angela. It is our cell phones. The one thing that's going to free us in our business, our cell phone is our best friend, but it is also can be, if, if you're not specifically on a call talking to a prospect, everything else on the cell phone could be 100% distraction. And so we need rest, all work and no play makes Liz a cranky girl. And God commands the Sabbath. In fact, he commands it so much, it's in the 10 commandments. I almost said 10 core commandments. It's the 10 in the 10 commandments. In Exodus, in the beginning of the Bible, in the Old Testament, in Exodus chapter 20, verse eight, it says, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it, you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son, nor your, da your daughter, nor your manservant or your maid, your housekeeper, nor your dishwasher, nor your laundry machine, right? Your washing machine. Not even your phone, not even your VCR. No, we don't use VCRs anymore. Not even your Netflix. Give your Netflix rest that day. Because in six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. But he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. There's only one person, there's only one person in the Bible that didn't obey the Sabbath and that never takes a day off, and it's the devil. And if we don't take the, our day off of rest and margin, we become cranky like him, right? We become like that. But you know, in today's culture, busy is cool. Busy is important. Overloading our schedules give us the badge of honor. But you know what? That's where we need to be different, okay? We need to manage our time and take that time off so we can show up full and rested and our best selves for the people that we love and lead. I'm a, I, I feel like I'm a, I'm a cranky, snappy mom if I don't rest and take care of me. If I want to overflow and fill up and speak life and encouragement into the team, which takes energy. We need to make sure that we're re refueling 
and obeying that command of rest. In fact, not just once a week, I like to take a Sabbath one weekend a month where Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it's no phone, no response. I like to do it one week a quarter where I'll tell the team, hey, I'm going here. I know Brian Crothers would say otherwise not to tell the team that you're going to be gone, but you know, I just, I want them to know, hey, if you don't hear from me, it's because we're taking this time to rest and recharge with the family. So I love you guys. I'm excited for you and all the amazing things that you're doing to make this world a better place. Let's um, do some breakout rooms so we can hear from all of you.